Will Solo take off with the Millennials, or will this origin story be a complete Falcon failure? This is Movie Sense. That was good, Mark. I actually really thoroughly enjoyed that. That was clever. Yeah. I like it. And with that, I'll uh, start off. This is DJ Selby right here. Me, in the flesh, uh, with another episode. Doing it with my boy, Justin Mua. Hey guys, catch my Instagram, at Justin Mua. Pop, right there. Nice. Off screen, once again. <laughs> yeah, not even in the frame. And then also, Mark, you got a little taste of him earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Mark Flores. Uh, you can find my uh, social media information down below where it's readily available right here. How's that, Justin? What? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even pay attention. <laughs> I noticed I said you got a taste of him, and I felt like that was the worst thing I could have said. But we're going to digress, guys. Star Wars, Han Solo, a Star Wars story. Yep. Is coming out uh, May 25th, early release the 24th. So that's something to look forward to this week. We're taking years before the rebellion, Han Solo, he's doing his thing, he's with yeah. his mentor, uh, he's meeting Chewbacca for the first time, he's also encountering Lando Calrissian. Yeah. So it's a nice little origin story, uh, per se, of Han Solo, the very famed man himself. Now he has to be played by uh, Alden Ehrenreich. So Ehrenreich, this, this yes. This role gets taken care of by Alden Ehrenreich. Hopefully, we'll see how the performance goes when it comes out yeah May 25th and some uh, top build uh, actors in it we got Woody Harrelson he's playing the mentor uh, Beckett uh, we're gonna have Amelia Clark in it so I think she's gonna be a love interest of some sort that's gonna be interesting Tandy Newton she's gonna play Woody Harrelson's wife in this flick and we also got uh, Paul Bettany Jean Favreau I think they're doing some voices in there and then none other than Donald Glover so he's gonna be playing uh, the famed Lando Calrissian so this is very exciting guys we're, we're taking off from the beginning Oh, yes. And uh, there's been some backlash and there's been some forward push for this. Yeah. And I want to get your guys' thoughts. So let's start off with the Star Wars guru himself, Mark Flores. We're piggybacking off the success of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. As exciting as this, this was, now Disney wants to take another risk with uh, Solo itself. And needless to say, a lot of people are saying, and I myself had the, uh, I myself had some, uh, had some gripes about it because you don't necessarily need an origin story with this with uh, Han Solo himself. Mm -hmm. But like I mentioned earlier, with the success of Rogue One, I know that Disney can spin something right in the direction of some positive notion with Solo, a Star Wars yeah. story. And I'm and glad I'm you excited, totally excited for it. I'm glad you brought up Rogue One. I gotta be honest with you yeah. because Rogue One is a really good story, good flick. I loved it. It you know it branched off the untold story of uh, maintain of obtaining the uh, plans to the Death Star and being able to ultimately defeat Darth Vader mm -hmm. and They're called the, oh, the Galactic Empire. The Galactic Empire. Yeah. The Empire. So, um, but the thing I I here's where I struggle with that. Right. Okay, because. Um, with Rogue One, you had a lot of new characters that were being introduced. Characters to fall in love with that you've never seen or heard from uh, until then. And with Han Solo, like you said, you know, we really didn't need an origin story of this character. Yeah. And we're seeing a couple of new characters, but we're really just rehashing the ones we already love. Correct. So I don't know if Disney really is taking that risk because they're banking off characters that they know people have as favorites. Yeah. Chewbacca, he's a favorite. Han Solo, oh, yes. he's a favorite. Uh, I mean, Lando, people yeah. love of Lando oh, for the yeah. little bit of time he was in the film. So, I mean, just thinking of that, I mean, where where are we standing with this? I mean, yeah. I know you're kind of for it. Yeah. I'm neutral. Justin. And I am not for it at all. I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm just not feeling this one. After episode eight, I, I lost all hope. You lost <laughs> all hope? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, because, you know, now... You, it, you had a, one last hope. One, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, it... I, I don't want to be that person, but I have to be when it comes to a franchise this huge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's getting to a point where I'm like, okay, you know, now it's just one huge money-making franchise. It's becoming a Transformer franchise. That That's what I feel like, and I don't Dang. want it to. Dang. Yeah, it sucks, but I have to put it up there with Transformers, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm going to be watching this next one. I'm going to let it ride out, see how it is, and if, if it comes out good, I'll go watch it. But, you know, my main concerns are... You know, with with the trailer, I, I just there's there's nothing that got me ex excited. There wasn't anything new compared to Rogue One, like what you said. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, okay, I already know these characters. I already know Han Solo and all that. Like, I don't really care for him at this point because he's yeah. been in so many movies. Right. You know, and the main the main actor, you know, um, Alden Ehrenreich. Yeah. 
I don't really know what other movies he's By the done. way, he has one of the easiest names to pronounce. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I made a little <laughs> note. <laughs> you have to go out of your way to mispronounce all the name, right? <laughs> yeah, right? You have to really go out of your way. Keep going. I'm sorry to cut you off. I just no, have to say, fine. it's one of the easiest names to pronounce. No, I mean, that's yeah. how I did mine, too. I wrote down, like, Aaron, like the name Aaron, <laughs> and then like, 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 Third Reich. So, oh, that's another yeah. great way to be <laughs> like Nazi oh. and you know, a white boy named Aaron. So, you know, it meshes. But, <laughs> guys, I, mean, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> this is taking a dark turn. But that's okay. Let's go. <laughs> let's hear what you have to say. Let's bring I like, it back. Let's bring it back. So, when they, when they introduced the, uh, the casting <laughs> and who's playing Harrison Ford, yeah. which was Alden, I wasn't so impressed. I was like, okay, you know, he doesn't have that huge of a credential behind his name to be But playing. they hired an acting coach for this guy. Did you know yeah. that? Oh, really? Yeah, they right, hired well. an acting coach to channel his inner Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> Harrison's so, too busy uh, to help you out with this, but we got this guy who really studied on Solo. Yeah, he was busy. I think he was watching um, the billboards <laughs> that night. The bill <laughs> and he just couldn't he get away. He his dog, so he's a little He couldn't up. get away. Um, but, uh, I, you know, he is an actor who's not well recognized in uh, film right now. Mm -hmm. Alden yeah, Aaron, right. um, but he's done a few good parts, and I don't know. I, I I'm curious to see what he does with it. Like I said, he did get an acting coach. Yeah, definitely. So you so, know, we'll see what happens there. The best part about it is it's tapping into one of the biggest stories that went unexplained. Mm -hmm. How did Han Solo do the Kessel Run? Apparently, in Solo, a Star Wars story, it gets explained, and a lot of tie-ins from Empire Strikes Back also come come anew. To but do solo. we really need that? Do we really? Because you never knew you needed it till now. I don't know if I need it, man. I yeah, gotta be definitely. honest with you because the thing I loved about Han Solo in when we first saw him, yeah. A New Hope, we first see him. He's this he's this rugged smuggling dude who really's never encountered a big, you know sacrificial type of position where he right. gives up what he's doing and he has to make it you know it's the first time him he was actually going into something as a group versus himself with the rebellion yeah. exactly and that's what we we're like holy cow this dude is just coming out of nowhere yeah and um now we're finding out that in this movie that he's going to be in is that he's kind of doing what he did in that movie. Yeah. And it's like, well, he was in his 20s and he did the same thing. So apparently he isn't this, you know, random guy. Apparently yeah. he just keeps this, encountering things. Yeah. Like, they're pretty much just rehashing the character. I feel like Disney's playing it too safe. They have been. Mm -hmm. If you look at, you know, episode 7, 8... They they really just rehash those from all you know from episode you know from all the older, older episodes you know I mean yeah you can argue like well you know all those movies are from rehash from other movies that are rehashed from other yes but I mean come on they're not they're not trying to do anything new at all I know what you're saying yeah, dude and so, I get it because they are playing it a little safe and close to the vest yeah they are uh, here's the problem that we have with Star Wars fans that I've seen um, Ryan Johnson's a good example of this we see Ryan Johnson and how he approached with the Last Jedi he tried to oh, do something gosh. different and it yeah. Did not go, and it did not bode well with like more than half the audience. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, and I thought honestly, Justin, it was a good story. And if a good story is a good story, and they make decisions that are creatively different than the previous person, I can see why people don't like it when they're so attached to this franchise. So maybe that's what they're feeding off of. You think? Well, I mean, well, well, Ryan Johnson's a whole different situation. It's the fact that he took a franchise that was already building up. And he just stopped it totally midway through. Derailed. He totally, yeah, he totally derailed okay, it. I see what you're if, saying. If they were to finish off that trilogy, or even, or even if that was, mm -hmm. you know, if that was episode seven, yes, that would have been fine. Something so they were totally too different. late. They were too late to try something. Exactly. New. Okay. Because what they did was they already set up everything. But with this, it's like it's a new thing. You know, like people want to see other characters mm -hmm. get recognized. Something that's more epic than just Han Solo flying ships already. I'm sorry, but you know, I'd rather see Yoda with a lightsaber. I'd rather see Boba Fett. With, you know, bounty hunting other dudes, like, across a galaxy. Like, how awesome would that be? Yeah, but then now I go into... I could say that we didn't even need a Boba Fett movie more than we didn't need a Han Solo movie. Well, yeah, the but anonymity Boba of Boba Fett is, is amazing. It's the appealing fact exactly. of Exactly, And the anim yes. anonymity of um, the history of um, Han Solo was so appealing to me, too. That's what made me a fan of Han Solo. So that's why this origin story for me... I'm on the fence about because I'm like, yeah, it looks cool and it has a lot of great stories that they're going to tie in that they talked about before, mm -hmm. but do I really want to see that stuff? Because my imagination goes wild. I imagine things way greater than what you could put on film. Yeah. I'm not to say that I'm a genius or anything. I am, but that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that my imagination was what got me enjoyed and enthralled in the character that is on Solo.
So that was that was perfect what you said. <laughs> you know, that's why I lower my expectations so low for for this franchise now. So that if I do go in and it is amazing, I can be wrong. And I want to be wrong about this movie, but right now at this point, you know, I'm setting it very, very low. The best thing about this is that we do, sorry to play on words, but we do have a new hope. <laughs> we have we have a story that could be tell, told a multitude of ways. We need to figure out how Han Solo did the Kessel Run. Mm -hmm. We can see how Lando and Han Solo met and to see how Chewie and Han met. Those are stories that we haven't seen that we didn't know we wanted, but now we have a movie to give us what we knew we didn't need that we need now. Holy cow, dude. <laughs> that was insane. I, I love that it. all on the spot. I, I can tell. Right I, now. <laughs> in my mind. Um, so, you know, take from that what you will. Um, if you are into Star Wars flicks, if you're into this whole franchise, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the flick. There's probably going to be some great stunts, some great scenes, um, just beautiful cinematography. Ron Howard's directing this. He's the he's a genius, man. So he knows how to make things look good. Um, do we want something new moving forward? I mean, let me know what you think. If you agree with us, um, specifically Justin or Mark or me, let me know. I want to know what you think. So that's been an episode of Movie Sense. It's been pretty chaotic here. Um, some of us are excited to see Solo, and we're going to leave you uh, with this. Mark, do that thing that we love watching you do. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another great episode of Movie Sense. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you know which Movie Sense videos are up next. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram at ThisIsMovieSense, and when you do, make sure you use the hashtag ThisIsMovieSense. Nice. All right, guys. We appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Ooh. See you guys. Bye.